I used this yeast on a petri dish that I isolated from home brewed kefir in order to make this a nice crusty light bread in a never ending quest to show people that microbiology isn't something scary that's only done in laboratories but can be done at home to yield delicious results. Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Biotech. First, before we actually make this bread, we need to get the yeast from the water kefir. So to do this, I used an inoculation loop into my homebrew water kefir, and I streaked it out onto a Petri dish. If you wanna learn more details about how I poured the Petri dishes and how I isolate organisms from fermented foods, you can go back and watch the A Bioengineer Makes Kombucha series. However, I'll go over just briefly the process of isolating this yeast from kefir. So after spreading it on the agar petri dish, I let it grow at 30 degrees Celsius in my refrigerator, turned into an incubator for about two days. There were a few other organisms growing on the petri dish, so I thought it would be a good idea to restreak on a new agar plate. And what this entails is just touching the colonies of the previous agar plate and doing a little bit of a zigzag on a new plate, rotating the plate, doing another zigzag. You can learn all about those zigzags uh, back in the Bioengineer Makes Kombucha series. So after a few days of restreaking on different Petri dishes, I eventually had these beautiful small white colonies. And this Petri dish contained an antibiotic, and so there was a very small chance that these were bacteria. Additionally, the yeast had a relatively slow growth rate, at least relative to bacteria, so more evidence that it's yeast. Now that I had the isolated yeast, I could start playing with it. And so what I did is I concocted a mixture of sugar, flour, and water, and touched one of the yeast colonies and swished it around in the mixture to inoculate it. When I make homebrew kefir, all it grows in is a mixture of brown sugar and water. So brown sugar and water is what the yeast is used to, and then flour is what I'm trying to transition the yeast to grow into. So I feel like I talk about this in every single video, but the genes and organisms are like toggle or dimmer switches depending on the gene. And so it's a good idea to slowly transition your organisms to the new environment that you're going to grow them in for best growth results. So after about three days of growing this brown sugar, water and flour mixture at 30 degrees Celsius. I noticed there were some nice little air pockets going on in the bottom of the tube. And so I inoculated a larger bowl of just water and flour. After another couple days of growth, I noticed there were bubbles in the flour and water mixture, more good signs that things were happening in the mixture. I then made a very simple bread dough, literally just all purpose flour and water and I used a few scoops of the flour, water, and yeast mixture to inoculate the dough. A very important part of bread making is kneading. If you don't knead your dough, it won't be very good. So the kneading is developing some gluten. So after kneading the dough, you can see you get this beautiful, smooth dough ball. And I put this smooth dough ball in a Pyrex dish with some olive oil to prevent the dough from sticking to the sides of the bowl. I then let this kneaded, inoculated dough rise overnight at room temperature. And in the morning, you can see there were nice little air pockets and there was a little bit too much olive oil around the outside and that sort of changed the flavor of the crust a little bit, but it wasn't so bad. Additionally, the top of the dough had developed sort of a skin. And I think this is a good thing in bread making. It helps develop a crispier crust and so what I did is I just cut a cross hatch in the top of the dough in order to let the dough rise in the oven. It did in fact rise wonderfully in the oven, a little bit crooked and a little bit lifting off the top of the dough, but it did rise and I was very happy about this. So after baking for about 25 minutes at 375 degrees Celsius, I took the dish out of the oven and let it cool. A little bit of a surprise to me is that the dough actually came out of the dish really easily. I feel like that never happens whenever I make anything in the oven. But anyway, I finally had this beautiful loaf. It had a very nice crispy crust, a very soft interior, and just the aesthetics of it was really pleasant. So anyway, let's pass it off to past me to tell us how it tastes. I am so incredibly happy with how this turned out. Look at this. 
it's beautiful. <laughs> I, I'm a, actually a little bit surprised how well it turned out. You can see the bread is pretty spongy. The top is pretty crusty. All good things. I'll do a little bit of ASMR on the crust real quick. That's pretty good. So it, it smells actually a little bit like honey in a way, and it smells funky, but not in the way that a sourdough does. I actually forgot to put salt in the dough, so uh, it's, <laughs> it's probably not gonna taste super good, but I'm gonna give it a bite. So here we go, I'm gonna take a slice right here. I think this would be really good with butter, but It tastes like bread. Yeah, it tastes like unsalted homemade bread. There's really, there's a, there's a tiny bit of a funkiness to it. Um, but if you gave this to someone and just said it's normal bread, here, try it. They, there's no way they would notice anything that's different about it. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. The air pockets are beautiful. It's still steaming a little bit. It's still a little warm. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. So good. I'm really happy with this. Bread from Kafiris. This stuff is so good.